I'm going to talk to you about today is how my addiction crept up on me. Because right at the beginning, the reason why I first started drinking in the first place was because I felt completely uncomfortable with who I was. I did not know myself. I was asking some students in this class, how many of you actually know yourselves? How many of you feel comfortable in the skin you're in? And a, a couple of you said that you, you knew who you were. But then I think a great lot of you kind of don't. And when I say the lot of you, I'm talking about this class and the other classes. I think when I look around and I observe, a lot of students code switch. Y'all know what it means to code switch? Code switch means you change your personality depending upon who you're with. White folks will code switch and start talking bro speak around the black folks because they want to fit in. That's called code switching. But code switching for me was changing my personality so that I could fit in with whatever group I was with because I just wanted to be accepted. I didn't know who I was. I also found that with the drinking society that I was a lot more fun and I felt that being deviant was attractive. I felt that being the bad boy and doing crazy things, I thought people wanted to be like me because of the behaviors I was exhibiting. Behaviors at school dances in high school, for example, when I would break dance. Now back in the day we had break dancing, and I'm a white dude, I don't know how to break dance, but I do know how to do the worm. Y'all ever hear of the worm? So I get down and I do the worm. I'm, I'm not gonna do it for you right now because I'm old and I've got a busted hip, and y'all might have to carry me out on the stretcher. But back in the day, I thought it was hilarious. And I, you know, I had a crowd around me and they're chanting, chanting. I was, I was so drunk at these dances. And I was singing songs in my thumb because I really thought all the girls thought that I was a great singer. And they were all like, oh my God, you're so crazy. And I thought that being so crazy was attractive. And so I really loved the attention. Fast forward. What I didn't know at that time was that alcohol was slowly becoming my identity. I was always searching for identity. Alcohol was becoming it. To the point where later on, when I was in my 30s, I was drunk more than I was sober. And so people did not know the sober me. And so people would say, after my fall, they'd say, I never knew he was a drunk. They actually never even saw me sober. The only person they ever saw was the drunk person. And when I say drunk, I'm not talking about falling down drunk. I'm not talking about slurring drunk. I had it together with my drinking, which was also part of the problem. Because of this thing called metabolism, my body could take in mad quantities of alcohol because of this thing called the boiled frog slow change over time. In the beginning, it was fun. In the beginning, it did everything I wanted to do for me. When I was 40, I'm scratching my head and I'm saying, how did I get here? So what I want to do is I want to talk to you quickly about this concept, and please write this down, called the boiled frog. Now there may have been some mad scientist someplace who actually conducted this experiment and I think PETA would have a hard time with this, the protection for, uh, for animal rights, the PETA organization, they'd have a hard time with this concept. So it's really just a metaphor, the boiled frog metaphor. And this is a metaphor for change. So we're not literally looking at a frog being boiled. We're looking at this as a comparison between this and what you'll see in a second. So, I'm not a very good artiste, but I'm going to do my best. So if you're better at drawing, do that, or else just at least write the words. So I've got this, I've got this pot right here, and this is my pot. And no, I'm not talking about the pot. I'm talking about the pot. This is a pot, all right? It's a shallow pot. And this, this is on an oven. So these are not wheels. These are the oven dials. So this is high, and this is low, whatever. These, so this is a pot, this is a pot on, a, on a stove top. And this pot is simmering, it's, it's bubbling, and I've got all these bubbles in here, okay? So this is a hot pot of boiling water, all right? This is a hot pot of boiling water. And then I've got this frog, and I, I'm going to just draw this frog right here. And I'm 
Yeah, it looks more like a chicken. I'm a frog. Look at me, and I've got a nose. I don't know if frogs have noses. But anyway, that's my frog. And I'm going to write on here frog. That's my super frog. All right. So we've got this frog. Woo! I'm a frog. Now let's just say, let's just say some mean mad scientist tosses this pot, this frog, into this hot pot of boiling water. What is this frog going to do when it hits this water? Cry. Let's just say frogs cry. I'm melting. Possibly. But have you ever seen a frog? Frog's pretty quick. So what do you think that frog is going to do when it hits that water? It it's going to try to hop out. And it will. So once that frog hits that water, it's just going to leap right out here and say, oh, homie, don't play this. That water is too hot for me. All right. This represents sudden change. We don't like sudden change. At the beginning, had created a sudden change in me that was bad, then I would have hopped right out and bad things would have never happened to me. But that's not the way this addiction worked for me. In the beginning, this is what I'm going to talk to you about right now. Now, let's just take another pot, okay? And we've got this pot, and it's still on the stove top, and this is my eye of the stove, and it's still on the stove top, and these are my, those aren't wheels. Those are my dials, those are my little dials. All right, so I've got this, this pot and, and the frog, so we're gonna put the frog in the pot. Hi, I'm a frog, I'm in a pot. And the frog is smiling and it's loving it because it looks like a cross-eyed frog. So this frog is in the pot and it's waving its, its, its little, its little uh, those, are, those are webbed feet. It's waving, saying I love it in here because this water is just warm. It's tepid. This frog is sitting inside of this warm, tepid pot of water, and it's chilling, and it's sitting there smoking its cigar, and it's reading the newspaper, it's kicking back, it loves it. It loves that warm water. In the beginning, alcohol was my warm water. It was extremely comfortable for me, and for a long time, it was extremely comfortable for me. But let's just say we have the same mad scientist, all right? The same mad scientist, and he comes up, and he slowly turns up the heat. Very slowly turns up the heat. So let's just say it's 3 o'clock here, and he turns up the heat just a few inches. The water starts to get a little bit warmer for the frog. This frog, when we are in an environment, our bodies warm up to that environment. The frog's body is warming up to the environment. It's becoming accustomed to it. So let's say at, at, at 4 o'clock, that mad scientist turns the water up a little bit more. And the water starts to get a little bit warmer. But the frog doesn't recognize that the water is getting warmer slowly because the frog's body is becoming adjusted to the slowly warming water. And let's say at 5 o'clock, Mad scientist turns it up even a little bit more to the point where there's starting to have a little bit of steam rising. And now this frog is saying, ooh, feels like a sauna in here. Feels like a mineral spring. I can feel that, oh, I can feel that water cleansing my pores. I'm gonna come out of here all clean skinned, not gonna be ashy at all, and all those women are gonna love me. So this frog is thinking, he's feeling kind of sexy right now which at 5 o'clock, which was I was doing, feeling kind of sexy about alcohol, thinking this thing's really working for me. 6 o'clock rolls around, a mad scientist turns it up a little bit more, and the frog's beginning to get a little bit of a weird feeling, kind of a, a faint feeling, because at this point, the water's getting so hot that at 7 o'clock, at 7 o'clock, at 3, 4, 5, 4 hours later, he's turning up to max heat, now it's bubbling, now we've got bubbles, now this frog suddenly has a frown. That's not a mustache, that's a frown. This fr frog suddenly has a frown saying, oh snap, it's getting hot in here. And so he tries to jump out, but he can't. You know why? Because his bones are liquefied, and now he's dinner. So uh, kids have been waiting at the table. Frog, 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 frog. So mama brings out poached frog for dinner and everybody's happy because we like poached frog. This is the problem with slow change over time. The frog at seven o'clock is wondering, 
How did I get here? He didn't wonder this here because sudden change, we jump right out. But at 7 o'clock for me, which was my dying hour, when I'm scratching at bugs, picking at my skin, when I'm hallucinating and hearing voices, by that time it was way, way, way too late. At 7 o'clock, it's too late. You don't ever want in your lives for it to ever become a time when it's too late. Because too late is irreversible. You want there always to be an option. And that's what we're going to be finding in Animal Farm, is this slow change over time, which we're going to begin reading today with chapter at the end of chapter 3, and we're going to be introduced to Squealer, who is going to start his manipulation game. You can cut that.